Since early on with making this channel, and having a distinct focus on international relations, doing discussions on theory and the goings-on of the world in a weekly show, I have been blessed to have a large international audience for my channel's size. From my subscriber analytics to my subscribe star backers, it's not as based in the United States as one might think, coming from some guy that gives unscripted rants from a pond in rural Texas. The network is wonderful, to get takes on what's happening from someone who speaks the language, so to speak. While I have a distinct interest in the political affairs and geopolitics of nations abroad, sometimes you do get hit with the brutality of how much influence that your nation has on everyone else's. I had an idea growing up in 2011 as a kid overseas while my father was in the military. I remember growing up in the 2000s before leaving Germany in 2011 that Germany was in some kind of version of the American 1980s in terms of dress and music. How true this was, coming from American servicemen who were living off-post, is something I'll leave to the comments section. But I left Europe in 2011, yet one of the things that I distinctly remember from my time growing up there was that my alarm clock was set to this radio station, and it would always play German songs back to back to back to back all of the time, but it would always have this weird, almost foreign interruption, wherein the radio DJ or the broadcaster of the time would start introducing American hits, whether it's from Rihanna or Katy Perry or Paramore, or really anyone else who was popular on the Billboard charts in the U.S. during the late 2000s and early 2010s. And then from there, I moved to El Paso, Texas, what I would consider to be a very foreign country to my lily white self, and such a classification that I still have for it to this day. Yet, my exposure to the outside world has gone up at an exponential rate since making the channel and moving to the middle of nowhere in North Texas. My interactions with those across the pond in the UK are an excellent example talking with academic agent on a regular basis, chatting with Morgoth, and countless others has been enlightening, to say the least. Here in the United States, we have political fights as fast as the news chirons can change their text, and arguing over predictions regarding the marketplace or elections is something you see daily on the timeline on Twitter and other social media. A recent video by Morgoth has served as the inspiration to make this video, his perspective on the banality of British politics, also the same title of the video. You should give it a watch, as Morgoth talks about the more boring things in regards to the UK, whether it's him recognizing Keir Starmer because he looks a lot like Richard Spencer, or simply the whole party gate thing that's going on within Boris Johnson's government. While here in America there always seems to be some sort of debate or something new going on every week, Sides on our end in the United States always have something going on. Whether it's over the issue now of Roe v. Wade, our elites in Silicon Valley and Washington, our own wretched political class, it shows that America is the cultural and political exporter to the rest of the West, and to a greater extent, the world. I've long held that my nation feels like it's occupied in some sense, a sensation I can only imagine is amplified in places like the UK or Germany, wherein the cultural artifacts that we see from San Francisco trying to put its modern rendition of a modern-day Gomorrah are now being shown all across the West in terms of gay pride parades, women's liberation, and, of course, things like the Tavistock Clinic with gender-affirming care. I will note, however, that this is somewhat of a Western thing, and not so much from what I've heard from patrons and subscribers in the Middle East. Although, I wonder, now in the 30 years since the internet and social media has begun to ravage the world, just how much of an impact that's going to stay true. After all, if someone can walk through downtown Pretoria in South Africa and hear Afrikaners speak in perfect Americanized English, or seeing the Chinese respond to social media by banning effeminate pop stars, or how much time young men can spend on the internet, social media, and video games, it does kind of show that America's real ability to have imperial power comes nowhere more than from its cultural and technological artifacts above all else. This isn't to dismiss America's military might, but let's face it, it becomes very easy to take over a country if you don't have to fire a shot, if they already buy your products, watch the same kinds of movies and cape shit, and needless to say, have a similar political dialectic to yours. 
one of the cornerstones of America's liberal hegemony, which scholar John J. Eikenberry argues has been happening since 1945, and others claim since America really staked its empire abroad in 1896. But American political issues are always seemingly at a form of sensory overload. Sometimes you can be only just aware of something that's been going on for months because there are already dozens of things to talk about. For many of us in these spaces, we try to focus on the bigger picture, whether that's dealing with the problems of globalism, our own civilizations finally facing decline and the crumbling from within, or just trying to make it ourselves as individuals, trying to live better lives and serve as a good example towards others. Yet oftentimes, and it's something that even I myself have fallen into time and time again, are those trappings and pitfalls of rank punditry, whether it's over various issues such as the Kyle Rittenhouse trial, more recently now with Roe v. Wade, or the ongoing events in Ukraine, all the time when we try to focus on the bigger picture or how we can take a larger lesson from these events, we always find ourselves sniping at ourselves and one another over the rank punditry of today, tomorrow, and what is already happening right before our screen Unfortunately, it is quite likely for us to fall into the trappings of hot takes and the pitfalls that come therein and make us lose track of the larger picture, and sometimes I do wonder if that is purposefully designed here in America. Our politics at every level, national, state, and local, are basically schizophrenic, where everything is coming at you all at once and at all times. Even in a place where I live, like Texas, where its state legislature meets every other year, Oftentimes, there's always going to be some news article about some bill that's going to be proposed, what the governor is doing, and what's already happening to the state writ large. Our Republican governor always cheering on about how happy he is that his pro-business attitude of tax cuts and low taxation is going to bring in all those California companies to make Texas the Republican way forward in the future, only for him to wonder why on earth is he being rolled out of his wheelchair from the governor's mansion when he just imported all of the people that are going to vote him out in the next election. Whether or not this one or the next, it is definitely coming. So I find myself just wondering about the politics abroad, how much it would be nice to have the simplicity or the banality that may happen in the UK, where elections are far different than our own, and the personalities take on a uniquely British sense of humor, or at least some sense of British absurdism. I wonder if that's only possible, however, if those countries are also beholden to the politics of some larger imperial power. Yes, obviously, in the past, Britain had quite a cultural influence on America. You can talk about the British invasion of its music in the 1960s and 70s, but nowadays it seems so incredibly different. The real kind of thing when it comes to our mimetic exchange of ideas and pop culture between the UK and the United States are seemingly in lowbrow, sort of nationalistic back-and-forths, the petty biscuit-tin nationalism that Morgoth and Academic Agent describe. Yet at the same time, for us in these spaces, we exchange what's going back and forth because we can have a better idea of how political elites engage and interact with one another, whether it's academic agents Dark Lord Watch with Tony Blair, or here in America watching rich individuals, whether it be Elon Musk or a certain Mr. Gates talking about what he would like to do with the rest of the world. Yet at the same time, I kind of find myself sitting here recognizing that I'm in flyover country. The places that people look down upon when they're flying from their airlines, wondering why the land is shaped the way that it is in regards to farmland. I live in a place, in a region of the world, that has been hollowed out from the inside by those wanting to hold on to the cultural avenues on the coasts, whether it be technology and exports, or the financial capital of the world and world governance like that of New York City. I do long for simplicity. I do certainly long for banality. I don't know if I'll ever see that in my lifetime, and odds are, as long as that America has the cultural and imperial ambitions that it does, it won't surprise me that I will probably live my whole life under this schizophrenic deluge of news and information and tidbits, whether it's at the local level or, of course, dealing with whatever makes and passes for national politics these days. So, as I sort of scramble on towards the end of this rant, 
I find myself gazing towards the horizon, knowing I'm still thousands of miles from the coast, and even thousands of miles further away from any nation that might have politics a little more simple than ours. But then again, Morgoth, I do wonder if maybe this is just our own idealism? That maybe because you're so beholden to the American politics and the American empire that we may miss out on the complexities of our own domestic nations and our own issues at home and hearth. Not to say that you aren't aware of those things or calling you ignorant, but sometimes it does sort of suck when you realize that maybe for both of us, we are both beholden and captured by the very elites that wish to do away with the things that we hold dear and treasure to ourselves, whether it be high trust societies, the identity of our own respective countries, or the simple fact that what we believe in is considered to be the anathema to the civic religion that dominates both of our countries, some kind of globalized liberalism that thinks that anyone can step on a board and be just fine, or where here in the United States the issue of baby formula has more intention and more focus on illegal immigrants that come into my country, and not those who actually need it at home as citizens. So perhaps we're both just gazing towards the horizon, both wondering what might be happening at home, and instead we find ourselves really only paying attention to our screens on what's happening abroad. I long for the day that maybe we don't have to see our respective countries be beholden to these kind of elites and the political machinations of empire, but at the same time, I don't think that that world will come in either of our lifetimes. I'm not particularly certain. But I do know that... What you may call banality, I may simply look at as some kind of comfort. I would long for that kind of banality. I would long for a goofball and an idiot like Boris Johnson, but at the same time I know that I probably have dozens lurking in the shadows here at home that I may not even be aware of, given just how vastly large this country is, both in its square miles, but also in its terms of population. But perhaps I'll leave it here. Yeah, things are always going on in the United States as I imagine that they would in any imperial power. I wonder if it's like that in China, but maybe that political system is just far too foreign for us Westerners to really comprehend that maybe they have something entirely different going on. But as for us, this means that I'm always going to be gazing towards the horizon, because I'm constantly aware of what's happening here at home. Yet, I also know that that means I would be falling into a trap of escapism. Some kind of idea that I could just hop on a plane ticket and find a simpler place, maybe somewhere across the pond. But only then would my ambivalence and concern be cranked up to 11, knowing that if I'm in a foreign country, I'm now beholden to what might be happening by great powers abroad. After all, aren't those in the West right now already terrified of the rhetoric coming out of American politicians, saying that they're at war when no formal declaration has been made, despite pouring billions of dollars into a foreign conflict that they have no squabble with in terms of a foreign people, yet at the same time, they're already getting inching themselves closer and closer to getting into an actual hot war with a nuclear-armed state. Perhaps we all wish for some kind of banality, because in the back of our minds, we do know how very dangerous it is when we don't pay attention, because even if we don't, the rest of the world doesn't pause. The rest of the world still moves on, and still, as much as we want to gaze to what's happening in other places, I can't help but wonder how much attention can I pay towards the rest of the world when I myself... A simple American man living really in the middle of nowhere, looking at his own country, ideologically and politically captured by those that hate its existence and its history, are moving itself closer and closer to some kind of planned, managed decline, and if at outright worst, Armageddon. But it's nice every now and then to acknowledge that things are banal, silly, and stupid at home. I know for sure that right now the biggest issue that we have is that some idiot wants to build a Dollar General in my very small town of a population of less than 1,000 individuals. And yet, I kind of smile and take comfort at that, because, you know, I live here. I should probably be paying more attention to that anyway, and Lord knows I certainly do, whether it's through normie social media or simply talking to my neighbors about what they think about it. It provides me some sense of comfort that at home and hearth, Things do seem very real, but also incredibly small to what's going on at the rest of the world. Yet there's some existential dread, I think, that comes in the back of our minds, knowing that while we do focus on the home and hearth, 
we do find ourselves gazing towards the horizon and wondering what on earth is just happening somewhere else at any point in time in the world. I've probably gone on long too now since I said I was going to conclude, so maybe I'll just wrap it up there. This is sort of just a more long-winded rant in expanding my thoughts, and if so, do forgive me. But I hope that you all enjoy this, and I look forward to seeing your comments down below, and I'll see you all in the next video. Thank you for the inspiration, Morgoth. There are so many people that I've gotten to get to know and interact with that really give me a lot to think upon. I'll see you all next time. Be prudent, everyone.